Hi YouTube, my name's Jeff and I'm the Vegual Guy. Today I'm going to be looking at making wooden sprockets. I need these as templates for some lost foam casting I'm going to be doing. I initially found these quite tricky to make, so I thought I'd show you the method I used. Now if you've already thought about making wooden gears or sprockets, the chances are you've already come across Matthias's videos and website. Matthias is a wood gears guru in my opinion, and his excellent gear generating tool is what I use to make my sprockets. But I do have some issues with his instructions on how to make these. They just didn't work for me. Matthias instructs us to cut out the paper template, glue it to a scrap of wood, drill out some holes, trim away the excess with a bandsaw and then sand it to finish. Now this is great in theory and I'm guessing it's worked well for him and thousands of other guys, but it just didn't work for me. Whether I used a lot or a little glue, I always found that the template would invariably tear and rip apart, leaving me with no guidelines to work from. More critically, I found that despite using these gear program correctly, my paper templates were never very accurate. I found my circles weren't true, so the measurements were off. This meant I had to find another way. So to begin with, I took a longer look at the template that was generated from Matthias's program and I tried to understand it better. My sprocket had teeth that were 25mm on centre and a rolling gap of 12mm between these. This meant that the diameter of each tooth had to be 13mm. Because of this, I drew some additional lines onto my paper template. These lines dissect each tooth in two and provide a centre point of a 13mm circle. I'll talk more about that later. Matthias suggests using a brattle to punch the marked drill centres on his template, but I found I could easily mess this up. I guess I'm not as skilled as he's. Plus the inaccuracies of the print meant that I couldn't really rely on these positions too much. So instead I started out with a simple panel pin put this in my drill and used an angle grinder to make a very sharp metal brattle pin for my drill press. I clamped a scrap of timber to my drill table to make a simple compass jig. With careful adjustment I was able to position the point of my brattle pin to be exactly on one of the drilling points of the template. I turned on the drill and let the drill press do its thing. With only the lightest of pressure, I was able to mark a hole for drilling later. Turning the work on a compass jig means that each subsequent mark is going to be the exact same distance from the centre as the last. With these drilling points marked, it was a simple matter of placing a 2mm drill bit into my drill press and boring a few holes. I removed the work and sanded the burrs from the underside and then placed everything back in place. I then switched to a step drill. This max is a 12mm, which is perfect for my needs and makes easy work of this. Notice the technique here. I'm applying very little pressure to the work and allowing the step drill to find and centre itself on the smaller hole below. Once it's centred, I apply more pressure to the work and then I can bore the hole. Avoid doing too much in one go with these step drills. This can easily lead to tearing out on the underside. Now we can discard the paper template but we need to add some guidelines back in. Now remember me going on about a 13mm circle? Well that's the diameter of each tooth on my sprocket. After making a very basic compass jig from a failed sprocket, I drew these lines back in. This meant I could see the shape of the teeth once again. With that done it's just a matter of removing most of the material to make a rough circle. Now I've been screwing my jigsaw to the underside of a board for years whenever I needed a bandsaw. It's not perfect, but it does a good job, especially when you don't have a bandsaw. But I thought Matthias's tip about adding a stabilising arm to a jigsaw was a brilliant suggestion. Look out for that video, you'll see what I mean. I don't have a dedicated sander, so I needed to make something to help me smooth everything out. I had a small piece of steel bar lying around, so I cut out a slice of coarse sandpaper and using some contact adhesive, I glued it to the bar. This made an excellent little drum sander. With the sander in my drill press, I was able to take my time and add the necessary shape to each tooth in turn. Having tried and failed on two previous occasions to build a wooden sprocket, 
I was pleased to finally crack it, and I owe it all to this simple jig. This enabled me to keep everything centered and circular. Now your sprockets or gears may be of different dimensions, but if you make careful note of the dimensions as shown on the paper template, and you use a compass jig like this one, it will hopefully help you improve the accuracy. And that's it guys, a finished video. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to send them in. If you've got any video requests, again, I'm happy to try and help where I can. Please do check out my YouTube channel and of course my other videos. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And that's it for now folks. Thanks very much for watching.